What we want to do today is kind of go through the process of SNP genotyping of a uh, population. And so we need to create a mapping population. So here's the two that we're working with. We kept the population size to uh, uh, a plate size. We used 92 progeny plus the, plus the parents. And this is just showing you, Robin showed you the tubers of um, DM earlier. They're kind of, a, um, kind of an elongated tuber with, with some uh, coloration. And then 84SD22 is kind of a, a mostly a white, white uh, skin tubers with uh, white flesh. And interestingly, the progeny kind of ended up being uh, purple, purple and red with even uh, uh, flesh color, uh, purple and red flesh color uh, in them. So uh, my talk here is um, we're using the Illumina Infinium platform. That's what's, what SoulCap has, has worked with. Uh, so this is not an advertisement for the Illumina system. There's many platforms that we can use, but um, we're working with the Illumina platform, and uh, it's, it's worked out very well uh, for us. Okay? So, what, so if you create your mapping population, what you need to do is purchase um, Illumina Infinium uh, potato SNP chips. The window for ordering those is actually passed. And there's been questions, you know, that have come to me by email. Hey, are, are, is Illumina going to be making any more um, uh, potato SNP chips? And, and so I think the answer is yes, they will make more SNP chips if there's enough of an interest. So if, we, if, if you think that you want to invest in some SNP genotyping, uh, why don't you let me know so then I can kind of uh, collect that, those numbers to see if we're getting to a point where Illumina is interested. We need to have kind of a minimum order so that it keeps the price per genotype sample um, at a reasonable cost. The, the original round was $85 as a sample, uh, what it work, worked out to, and I think that uh, I think has been a reasonable place to be. It seems like it would be nice to get a little cheaper, but uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay. Um, let me back up there. And so what we're going to end up do, um, uh, doing is we need to isolate high-quality high DNA, and we need to quantify that. And this has been um, uh, a little bit of a process. The procedure for the SNP genotyping is a three-day process. And to me, that just you know, uh, is amazing that we can analyze 8,300 genetic markers in three days in, our, in a population of 192, if, if, if being. So uh, the system set up to run 192 samples in three days. And uh, Dan Zarka is the postdoc in, in my lab that's been running all the SNP genotyping. He's been doing it on potato, done some on tomato, and he's also doing it for the, the uh, rose breed uh, program, which is doing cherries and peaches right now. And it's, I, I have to put a plug in for the Illumina uh, chip system, is that the data coming off it has been, has been excellent. We, we haven't had any failures. And, and so the whole process of generating markers, to me, is taken out of that, uh, the, 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 the work. And so if you invest in these chips, what you can do is invest more time in the in the genetic analysis and the phenotypic analysis. So I always feel like the old time of the grad students spending all the time in the lab generating markers is, um, is kind of past in a way. Okay. So, um, so it's this three-day procedure, and that's, that's the truth. Uh, so then we get that, um, the fi data files. They're imported into a program called Genome Studio. So if you're going to work with these, the SNP data, you need this software from them. And then you can in initiate your, your mapping. And so here is um, uh, kind of your uh, uh, key, key uh, comments that, we, that we've uh, summarized. And after all the work that we put in, this is the way that, we, um, that some of the things to think about so that you do things uh, correctly. One is you've got to input your reps with unique names so that you have um, uh, so that Genome Studio reads your data correctly. 
um, so that we have a kind of a standardized system of looking at the at the SNP calls. We want to always export it as a design strand. I'll, co I'll come back to that. And then um, what we want to do is remove all questionable SNPs, bad SNPs, SNPs that map to multiple places, missing data. So that, um, uh, these are things that, that you need to work through. You need to check the parent, uh, parent replications to make sure that the genotype calls agree. Um, and so you can check. Um, and so, for example, in our case, DM is supposed to be homozygous. And so if the SNP isn't homozygous, maybe we want to pull that out. Uh, check the parents' for ability to segregate in the population. Uh, we can also need to look at the skew, if there's skewed segregation and what's going on. And, uh, and so the Genome Studio is going to be important to that. You're going to make your map and then go, again go back and look at your, um, at your skewed markers. So that's kind of like the, the process that we feel uh, that, you, that you need to go through. Okay, here's a, a little primer on the SNP, on the SNP chip as, as it finally stands. So it was originally supposed to be a 10K chip, and then when, you put, um, when we sim, uh, submitted our SNPs, they only actually, I think, used 9100 because some of the SNPs required two beads rather than a single bead. And so, um, and then of those 9100, they have a certain uh, uh, percentage that, that didn't work so we actually had 8,300 8, that actually worked in the, in the, um, uh, on the chip. Now of those 8,300 SNPs, we kind of, we didn't just randomly put them on. What we tried to do was focus on SNPs that were in candidate genes. If you remember, there were calls to put out, people sent in their favorite candidate genes. Robin collected all that information and then uh, we, we focused on SNPs within those candidate genes and many of those are included on the SNP chip. In addition, I think this was really nice is that Robin went in and found um, all the you know, found SNPs that were in already published genetic markers. So that gives us a little bit of um, reference there. Um, then this is I think the power of having you know the, the, the sequence is that we uh, the rest of the SNPs based upon where they are in the genome were chosen to, to maximize the, the, the coverage. So when it was all said and done, about 650 megabases of the genome was covered with our, uh, by our SNPs. So, and if you remember, Robin talked about that there were 727 megabases in the DM uh, genome. That was a sequence. I think we're in a in pretty good place. Okay. Um, so, is 8,300 uh, SNPs good enough? I think so. Um, there's other colleagues that are working with uh, soybean and corn and all that. My colleague in our, in a, at MSU that works on soybeans, they have a 55K uh, chip. And, uh, but um, I don't think we need that many markers at this time. It would, it would be cost pro prohibitive. So I think SOLCAP is invested in already SNP genotyping about 1,600 genotypes with the, with the SNP chip. And then other programs have been purchasing chips and, um, and, uh, and getting that done. So at this point, over 6,000 genotypes have been ordered, you know, or, or chips for about 6,000 genotypes have been ordered worldwide. So I don't know where, you know, who has those chips or whatever, but um, we have an, a large number in the U.S., but over in Europe, they've, in, they've invested in that. And, um, and uh, uh, so I think that this has been a, has been a success. Okay. So kind of getting back to the, to the procedure here is that I think what we need to have is, high, is the high quality DNA. And it's kind of funny that something that's been around for decades is kind of one of the bugaboos in the whole process is, and this doesn't just go for potatoes, this goes for tomatoes too, is the, the simple process of isolating high quality DNA at a concentration good enough has been some of our holdups in the, in the process. And um, so we've been recommending either chiagen or CTAB uh, method, but importantly is that uh, Illumina says that they, they quantify their DNA using a picogreen uh, assay and, um, and that you need, 50, okay, hold on, 
and we need to adjust the concentration of 50 nanograms per microliter. And so we need about 15 microliters to do, to make sure we have enough to do the analysis. And um, Dan uh, Zarka says, if it comes in 96 well plates with self-adhesive adhesive foil, sealant cover would be the best way to, to receive that. Okay? So we received it in many different ways, but the key is this, is this concentration. And um, if you're you know, using these chips, each chip holds 24 genotypes. And so each chip costs over $2,000. So you want to make sure that you do it right. And so we've tried not to skimp on the DNA quality and concentration. Um, I will admit that we've put samples on with less than 50 nanograms per microliter. Um, Dan, Dan uh, has taken it a little bit lower than that. And, we, and it has worked out, but it's nice to use this as a, as a, as a standard, okay? And uh, so the, uh, I'll, I'll just step back there. I, I put in there, thank you, Dan Zarka, because every chip that we've done has worked right now. I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like if we had some, some failures, but we've been getting excellent data, and, and Dan Zarka has been uh, taking on the responsibility of, of, um, of doing the genotyping, and I'm afraid to move it to anybody else because we've been so, so successful at, at that. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's truly a three-day procedure. You know, everybody always likes to uh, make something seem a little better than it really is. And so I would always tell people, oh, it's about a week. But, I, but ap after it's really gone through it, it's actually been about a three-day procedure. And it's, so it's a microarray-based uh, system um, uh, that, uh, that we use. And so what comes out of this is an intensity uh, data file. Hold on, let me see if I. Um, and what I don't, what I don't have, what I'm not seeing here is I can't remember. But we have um, on the, on that um, each of the wells on that chip, the 24 wells, there's about 250,000 beads, and of those, the, each of those beads are, are replicated 15 to 30 times. So whenever there's a, a call made on this eye scan when it's the laser that's reading it. What it's doing is taking an average of those 15 to 30 bead reads, and so you're getting a, a very good call if the if your beads are are, um, are read are read correctly. So it's unlike a gel where you load a sample on, you got a well, and you got a band, or you don't have a band, or you think you have a band. I think this is actually. Uh, um, more reliable data that, that comes off the, the, the scanner that, that's read. 